In 1960, Craig Breedlove said his three-wheel dream car, still in model form, would break the record. Mickey Thompson put four engines in one car. It'll never work, said the engineers, but it did. Donald Campbell, following the tradition of his father, Sir Malcolm, brought four million dollars worth of car from England only to crash. A basic design defect was in the positioning of the cockpit, out front with nothing to guide on. Nobody ran in 61. In 62, Doc Ostich should have stayed home. And in August 1963, Craig Breedlove startled the racing world with a 407 mile per hour two-way average. 1964 brings a measure of success to Donald Campbell, but his record for wheel-driven cars is eclipsed by Tom Green in a jet racer built by Art Arfon's brother, Walt. A lot of people in Akron thought that Art was a little crazy. Art didn't care what people thought. All he cared about was running the monster at Bonneville. And now he's here, surrounded by people who do not think he's crazy at all. These are men who understand and have faith in what he is trying to do. The members of his crew, all friends and volunteers, whose full reward will be the joy of participating behind the scenes, on the sidelines, in The Challenge. Henry Butkowitz, jet engine research engineer. Bud Groff, contract painter and mechanic. Ed Snyder, Art's partner and chief mechanic. Charlie Mayenschein, designer and mechanic. The man with the drive. Arthur Arfons, Akron, Ohio. The man living with his fears and worries. His crew also worries. But what of tomorrow? Tomorrow will bring the first test run under power of the Green Monster. Dawn. The Green Monster of Arthur Offen sits and waits. Today, she will run. Today, the girl from the other side of the tracks will try to become a lady, to prove to the men who love her that money isn't everything. The record-breaking cars before her were built by experts and cost a fortune. Donald Campbell's $3 million Bluebird had 70 companies behind it and the support of all England. Craig Breedlove's Spirit of America represented a quarter of a million dollars. The Green Monster, $10,000 total. It's absolutely impossible to build a 500 mile an hour car for $10,000. But our funds didn't know that. So he built her anyway. He built her with his head, his heart, and his hands instead of money. He figured out everything for himself using simple aerodynamics. The car would want to get airborne at high speeds. So he built and attached a three-foot self-adjusting wing over the nose to keep it on the ground. The cockpit should be streamlined. So he decided to drive in a reclining position. Art knew he would need parachutes to help stop the car at high speeds. The chute ejector system used by the astronauts on space capsules would have been ideal, but cost about $1,000. So he built his own for three dollars out of a 12-gauge shotgun he bought in a hawk shop. A friend's wife helped sew his homemade parachutes together. A car body like this would usually cost $50,000. It didn't cost Art that much though. He made his own forming machine for $32 and then molded the body for less than a thousand. Art first painted the car with a green industrial paint costing 50 cents a gallon. He got it in a war surplus store because it was cheap. That's why he calls his car the Green Monster. Half the car's cost is in the engine. Art picked it up in Miami from another surplus store. It was a J-79 jet engine from a wrecked Air Force F-104 fighter plane. 17,000 horsepower, the most that's ever been put in a car. Originally, it cost the government $175,000. Art got it as surplus junk for $5,000, fixed it up, and made it run. The only thing our funds couldn't find in a surplus store were tires that would run five or 600 miles an hour. 
So he persuaded a leading tire manufacturer to furnish the tires and wheels. The company developed special high-speed tires designed to carry over 200 pounds of pressure. When this month started, Breedlove held the record at 407 miles per hour. But that sure went down the drain. The second, Tom Green, ran the Wingfoot Express 413 miles per hour. The fifth, Art Arpons, gunned the Green Monster to 434 miles per hour. The 13th, Breedlove, drove the Spirit of America 468 miles per hour. The 15th, Breedlove, did it again at 526 miles per hour, then escaped from a spectacular accident when he couldn't get stopped. Now it is only the 27th, and Arthur Arpons is going to go again. This time, for 600 miles per hour. What makes a man do such a dangerous thing? Arpons himself says, I don't really know. I promised my wife years ago that I'd quit when I hit 200 miles an hour. Then I went two and a quarter, and it was easy. I couldn't quit. I had to try to do better. Guess I always will. The real challenge is to try to do something better than anybody else, something nobody else has done. It's almost time. The man is ready. The car is ready. It takes a definite type of person to do this, to try to control a car which, when opened up, is exactly as manageable as a Bengal tiger on the loose, as controllable as a tornado. On Tuesday afternoon, October 27, 1964, Art Arpons climbed into the Green Monster for his final assault on the world land speed record. This man has to be sold on himself and 100% confident. If he loses his confidence, he may lose everything, including his life. is over, but the tale is only half told. Now Arpons and his crew must turn the green monster around and make a return run within one hour. Only then will their record attempt be officially recognized, for it is necessary to make two runs, one in each direction, for official world sanction. Now the work begins again. The car is turned around and put in its final position. Monsters' parachutes are repacked. The first run is announced. 515 miles per hour. Fast. But not fast enough. The record stands at 526 miles per hour. Now he must go faster than 542 miles per hour on the second run if he is to capture the world speed record. As usual, we had an hour to service the car. We're very careful with the kerosene. We strain it all through a cloth to be sure no dust gets in it. The crew needed refueling too, but I wasn't hungry. Too much to think about. The car is pointed north. The time is 1.55 p.m. What is it like to be in a car going over 500 miles per hour? Harfan says... The noise from the jet engine is deafening. There is a tremendous vibration. The heat is intense, but I don't feel it. Visibility is not very good, but I don't think about that. Everything blurs going by. My eyes try to focus on the black line ahead. 
The car screams and the wheels and the salt make wild noises. I keep waiting for something to happen, and it seems like, like an eternity. It all happens so fast that it's hard to catch up with the next second. I say, God, just give me a few more seconds and I'll have it made. It's a wild, scary ride. to a safe stop. The crew, dedicated, loyal. The ones who believe in Arpan's rush to his aid. None is necessary. He is safe. Emotion sweeps everyone. They laugh, and grown men cry. The speed is released for the second run. Five, five, nine miles per hour. Combined with the first run of 515 miles an hour, it gives an average of 536.71 miles an hour. A new world land speed record. Today, Arthur Arfons is the fastest man in the world on wheels. As one of his crew so aptly said, most of us are pretty well ridiculed. People look on us as a bunch of fools. But there is a tremendous challenge and a tremendous sense of accomplishment when you prove them wrong. Arthur Arfons, Akron, Ohio. The man with the dream that came true. A man who answers well to himself. A man whose next challenge may be to break the sound barrier in an automobile. The fastest man on earth, and the happiest. <laughs> 